All right, so we're still on day 13 notes. We just found out some properties of a derivative. Now this part asks us to look at a table. So it says numerically the value of the derivative at a point can be estimated by finding the slope of the secant line passing through two points in the graph on either side of the point for which the derivative is being estimated. So let's look at this chart. So the first x value we're going to look at is when x is 0. So it says estimation of the derivative. So what we just said is we're going to find the slope. So if I'm looking for when x equals 0, so I need to find the slope passing through these two points. So let's do that. So f prime of 0. So f prime of 0 is going to be change in y. So we'll go 2 minus negative 3 all over change in x, which we'll start here at negative 3, so negative 3 minus 1. Let's write that down. And again, I'm putting equal, but it really should be approximately equal to. So we have 2 minus negative 3 all over negative 3 minus 1. And that's roughly, and again, we're still approximately equal to, negative 5 fourths. And so if my slope is negative, then I know that it must be decreasing. And what was my point of tangency? Back on the table, point of tangency was given as 0, 1. And I just found my slope of tangency was to be approximately equal to negative 5 fourths. So now I can come up with the equation of the tangent line at this value of x. And we're going to use point-slope form. So it's going to be y minus 1 equals negative 5 fourths times x minus 0. So when you guys try the rest of this chart, I'll fill it in. Then you guys can check to see how you did. OK, so the first thing we did was we first of all looked back at this chart. and. They gave us all the points. So when I have point of tangency, this is where those are coming from. So whether, whatever the point is. So if I'm looking at 4, 0, they asked us to find the slope of the secant line passing through the two points on the graph on either side. Now, obviously, this is an interval difference of 3 from 1 to 4, and this is 2. But that's OK. This is all they gave us in the table. So we had to use those two points. So here's what we get. Again, oop, this is all the derivative. And it's just an estimation, so that's why we have approximately equal to. So based on the two points we have from the data table, we find that f prime of 1 equals negative 1 fourth. Therefore, it's decreasing. Point of tangency was given. Slope of tangency we just found. And then we use the point slope equation of a line to get this last part. And again, it's equation of the tangent line at this value of x. We did that for each of these, each of these uh, sections in the chart. So you guys can finish filling that in. OK, next, they give us the graph of a function g of x is pictured to the right. Identify the following characteristics about the graph of the derivative g prime of x. Give a reason for your answer. So let's find out the interval where the derivative g prime of x is negative or less than 0. Let's find the interval. Again, these are interval or intervals where the derivative g prime of x is greater than 0, positive. And then find the value of x or values of x where the derivative equals 0. So now we're kind of going backwards. So let's see what we get here. OK, so what we get is the derivative g prime of x is less than 0 on the interval from negative 4 all the way down here to 2, negative 2, excuse me. Um, I wrote positive 2, sorry. Let's write that again. Negative 4 to negative 2. And then again from 1 all the way to positive infinity, because that's where the graph of g of x is decreasing. For the next one, where the intervals where the derivative is positive, well, g prime of x is going to be greater than 0 on the first interval from negative infinity all the way up to negative 4. And then again, union on the interval from negative 2 all the way up to 1. And notice that that's the parentheses means not including the negative 4 or the negative 2 or negative 1. Same thing up here. It's not including the negative 4, the negative 2, or the 1. Um, it's always parentheses at infinity and negative infinity.
Okay, now let's do the last one. Where is the derivative of zero? Okay, what we're getting here, where is the value of the derivative equal to zero? Well, it's equal when it equals when x equals negative four. And I drew the tangent line here. Notice we have a horizontal tangent line. Uh, when x equals negative two, and lastly when x equals positive one. If we look, when do you go through zero? You have negative, uh, excuse me, positive slopes. And then you go to negative slopes. So how do you get from a positive number to a negative number? You got to go through zero. Here we have negative numbers, negative slopes, and then positive slopes. Well, right at that relative minimum, we go from negative to zero to positive. And then over here, when x equals one, we have positive slopes. We're going to eventually get to negative slopes. How do I get there? I got to have one slope to zero. Okay, this next part dealing with normal line. For those taking physics, you guys have seen this. Picture to the right is a graph of a quadratic, and they give us what it is. Um, and now, and that's in vertex form. So it says draw the line tangent to the graph of f of x at x equals 1. And this is our f of x and x equals 1. So I need to draw the tangent line at that point. Tangent line um, represents, uh, only intersects the graph at one point, and that's going to represent the value of the derivative. So let's do that. All right, so now I have the tangent line there, and they're asking us to estimate the value of f prime of 1, which is the derivative. And what is the derivative? It's the slope of the tangent line. So 1, 2 over 1. Oh, that's perfect. 1, 2, a little less perfect. Down 2, again, a little less perfect. But we're going to say the slope of our tangent line equals negative. So it says find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of f of x at x equals 1. Well, I know this point right here is 1, 2. So we're going to do just what we did before. I know the point of tangency is 1, 2. I know the slope of the tangent line is negative 2. And I have equals. It should really be approximately equal to because it was really close at first down 2 over 1, but then it started getting further and further away. But uh, we get y minus 2 equals slope times x minus 1. And then this last step says the normal line is the line that is perpendicular to the tangent line at the point of tangency. Draw this line and then find the equation of the normal line. Okay, so what I just find, first of all, they're going to be perpendicular to each other. There's my right angle. It's still going to cross at the point of tangency, which is 1, 2. In green is my tangent line, and blue is my normal line. So what do I know? I know that the slope of my tangent line was negative 2. So the slope of the normal line is going to be the negative reciprocal of that, which will be positive 1 half. And I still have a point, and that's still 1, 2. And now the equation of the normal line, let's use point slope equation of a line. So y minus 2 equals 1 half x minus 1. And we're done with that. There you go, equation of the normal line. And you guys used this in physics when you were dealing with forces, and you had to draw your force diagram. Okay, now they're switching around. Now they're giving us the graph of the derivative. And we have to go back and identify the following characteristics about the graph of h of x and give a reason for your responses. So we look at this, and the first question says, the interval where h of x is increasing. Well, how do I know when h of x is increasing? It's when the derivative is greater than 0. Now, it gets a little tricky because we're so used to looking at, hey, where the slope is 0. Well, where the slope is 0 is going to be all these points of the x-axis, okay? And that's hard because we're so used to looking at just the positive slope, but we're going backwards now. So, hey, where these are positive, that meant my original function, h of x, was increasing. So let's write that down. So here's what we have. Where's the interval of where h of x is increasing? h of x is increasing when the derivative is greater than 0. The derivative is greater than 0 any time the graph's above the x-axis. It's saying where's the y value? greater than 0. That means above the x-axis, and we have the interval from negative 2 to 1 combined with the interval 
3 to infinity. So let's take a look at that again on the graph. Negative 2 all the way up to 1, not including the negative 2 or 1. And then from 3 to infinity, not including the 3. That's where it's increasing. All right next, it says find the intervals where h of x is decreasing. Well, h of x is decreasing whenever the derivative is negative or less than 0. And the derivative is less than 0 whenever it's graphed. Because again, remember, this is the graph of the derivative. So where is this derivative 0? It's when it's below the x-axis. So let's, let's write that out. And we said we go from negative infinity to 2. And then you combine that union with the interval 1 to 3. Okay, next question says the value of x where the original function has a relative minimum. So let's go back. Where do min minimums occur? Hey, they occur whenever the graph is has a, um, a negative, meaning it's going down. So he, these values, it's going down. And then it starts going up. I read the chart. So we're going to do maximum first. So maximum occurs where it goes from uh, decreasing. Excuse me. Minimum occurs when it goes decreasing to increasing. So we're going to get a couple. Let me put them in green. So there's a change where it goes decreasing to increasing. Here it's increasing then decreasing. And over here, it was decreasing, then increasing. So let's fill in our chart. So the relative max gonna, of a derivative is going to occur when it changes from positive to negative, which means from whenever it goes above the x-axis to below the x-axis. So let's look back here. Hey, it goes from positive above the x-axis down to negative. Um, and again, it was increasing, gets to a point, and then it's decreasing. So that will be the relative max. Yeah, when we have something increasing, then going to decreasing. Let's look at the next part. So the relative minimums occur whenever the derivative changes from negative to positive, or from decreasing to increasing. And that happens twice on the graph, at x equals negative 2 and x equals 3. So let's look. The original function is decreasing, going down, 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 down stops going down and then starts going up. Well, to make that transition, there had to be a relative minimum. And then same thing over here at x equals 3. Decreasing, decreasing, stops decreasing, then it starts increasing. So relative minimum decreases, then increases. OK, the last two parts here. First one, if h of negative 1 equals 1 half, what is the equation of the tangent line? drawn to the graph of h of x at x equals negative 1. So from our given information, hey, when x is negative 1, y is 1 half. That's our point of tangency. Um, what is the equation of the tangent line drawn to the graph of h of x at x equals negative 1? Well, again, I go back to my graph, and h prime of negative 1, or the derivative when x equals negative 1, equals 5. Let's go back and look at that. That's the point on the derivative. And now I know the point of tangency. I know the slope of the tangent line. So now I can come up with an equation. y minus 1 half equals the slope 5 times x plus 1. And I leave it like that. I do not write it as y equals. All right, next they want to know what is the equation of the normal line drawn to the graph of h of x at x equals 2. Well, I know that the point of tangency is given. Point of tangency is 2, negative 3. This also happens to be the point of the normal line, because that's where they intersect at the point of tangency. So we're going to call it the point of tangency. Um, I know the slope, slope of the tangent line. Let's go back to the graph. At x equals 2, hey, that's equal to negative 2. So let's come in here. Fill that in. So that equals the derivative when x equals 2. Hey, that was equal to negative 2. So what's the slope I'm looking for? Hey, it's going to be the negative reciprocal of negative 2. That is going to be positive 1 half. And now I have a point and I have a slope. 
let's use the point slope form of an equation of a line. So it's going to be y plus 3 equals the slope 1 half times x minus 2. Do not write it as y equals. Oh, that was awful. Okay, we're done. Let me see if I can circle that. All right, great job. Fill those out. Start on homework 13. There we go.